Give thanks to God. Proclaim God's goodness throughout the whole world. Let us offer our lives in service to others. Let all of us, gathered wherever we may be, celebrate God's absolute love. Welcome to this time of worship, wherever you are, on this fourth Sunday in Lent. While we cannot be together in person, we can still gather around sacred words and proclaim God's faithfulness, power, and love. We continue the journey of Lent, immersed in the flowing, life-giving waters of baptism toward the embracing hope and reconciliation of the cross. I am Pastor Richard Brown, Trinity Evangelical Lutheran Church in Sebastopol, Tavistock, is a member of the Evangelical Lutheran Church in Canada, Eastern Synod. We are also a member of the 13 Congregation Strong Nith Valley Ministry Area. The fourth of the Old Testament promises providing a baptismal lens this Lent is a promise that God makes to Moses. Those who look on the bronze serpent will live. In today's gospel, Jesus says that he will be lifted up on the cross like the serpent, so that those who look at him in faith will live. When we receive the sign of the cross in baptism, that cross becomes a sign that we can look toward in faith for healing, for a restored relationship with God, for hope when we are dying. Okay, I might as well do the prayer of confession and assurance here then as well. Yeah. Our prayer of confession and assurance. God of mercy and patience, be with us this day as we celebrate one great hour of sharing. Help us to remember that the gifts we give go to help the many people in need. Remind us again that our lives are meant to be gifts to others, for healing, for hope, comfort, peace, and love. Forgive us when we get so caught up in the details of living that we neglect to help others. Enlighten us again with your spirit and your word of healing love. Give us hearts for joyful caring and sharing. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Our gathering song is number 759 in the Evangelical Lutheran Worship Book, My Faith Looks Up to Thee.
or prayer of the day. Lord, as we gather here on this day of sharing, remind us that you have shared with us your most precious gift, our Lord Jesus Christ. Help us to model our lives after his messages of compassion and service to you and to all your world. In Christ's name, we offer this prayer. Amen. Our first reading this morning is from Numbers chapter 21. Though God provides food and water for the Israelites in the wilderness, they whine and grumble. They forget about the salvation they experienced in the Exodus. God punishes them for their sin, but when they repent, God also provides a means of healing. A bronze serpent lifted up on a pole. The reading. From Mount Or they set out by the way to the Red Sea to go around the land of Edom. But the people became impatient on the way. The people spoke against God and against Moses. Why have you brought us up out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? For there is no food and no water, and we detest this miserable food. Then the Lord sent poisonous serpents among the people, and they bit the people, so that many Israelites died. The people came to Moses and said, We have sinned by speaking against the Lord and against you. Pray to the Lord to take away the serpents from us. So Moses prayed for the people, and the Lord said to Moses, Make a poisonous serpent and set it on a pole, and everyone who is bitten shall look at it and live. So Moses made a serpent of bronze and put it upon a pole, and whenever a serpent bit someone, that person would look at the serpent of bronze and live. The word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be be to God. God. Our psalm this morning is Psalm 107. Give thanks to the Lord, for the Lord is good, for God's mercy endures forever. Let the redeemed of the Lord proclaim that God redeemed them from the hand of the foe, gathering them in from the lands, from the east and from the west, from the north and from the south. Some were fools and took rebellious paths. Through their sins they were afflicted. They loathed all manner of food and drew near to death's door. Then in their trouble they cried to the Lord, and you delivered them from their distress. You sent forth your word and healed them and rescued them from the grave. Let them give thanks to you, Lord, for your steadfast love and your wonderful works for all people. Let them offer sacrifices of thanksgiving and tell of your deeds with shouts of joy. Our second reading this morning comes from Ephesians chapter 2. While we were dead in our sinfulness, God acted to make us alive as a gift of grace in Christ Jesus. We are saved not by what we do, but by grace through faith. Thus our good works are really a reflection of God's grace at work in our lives. The reading. You were dead through the trespasses and sins in which you once lived, following the course of this world, following the ruler of the power of the air, the spirit that is now at work among those who are disobedient. All of us once lived among them in the passions of our flesh, following the desires of flesh and senses, and we were by nature children of wrath, like everyone else. But God, who is rich in mercy, out of the great love with which he loved us even when we were dead through our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved and raised us up with him and seated us with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus, so that in the ages to come he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace in kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not your own doing, it is the gift of God, not the result of works so that no one may boast, for we are what he has made us, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand to be our way of life. 
The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. The gospel acclamation today is taken from the very gospel that we read. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but have everlasting life. Holy Gospel according to St. John. And just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son that who, any, everyone who believes in him may not perish but have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Those who believe in him are not condemned, but those who do not believe are condemned already because they have not believed in the name of the only Son of God. And this is the judgment, that the light has come into the world and the people loved darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. For all who do evil hate the light, and do not come to the light, so that their deeds may not be exposed. But those who do what is true come to the light, so that it may be clearly seen that their deeds have been done in God. The Gospel of the Lord. It's so good to come and share the gospel with you again. And as I looked at the lessons for today, I came across a question that I would like to ask you first of all. How would you describe the world in which we live? How would you describe the world in which we live? Well, you may have come across a number of words, but the word that came to my mind was chaotic. It's not just my word, but several people who I've read lately have said the same thing. The world is in chaos. And when we live in something that's in chaos, it doesn't come across too well for us. But we read, what we read from the scriptures today give us three beautiful stories of how God's redemptive presence is present in the chaos of the world. And as I looked at the lessons and the times in they, which they were written, it seemed to me that the world in their times was also in chaos. In fact, I don't know if the world has ever been without chaos. We read, first of all, that story of the bronze serpent. Many of you probably know it from Sunday school. The people of Israel had been journeying in the wilderness for almost 40 years. And they got tired of the manna and the quail that they were eating. And so they complained. They complained to Moses and they said, tell God we don't like this stuff. It doesn't taste good anymore. Now that does not seem too civil, does it? God had brought them into the wilderness. He supplied them with food for every day. And now they don't want it. So what does God do? He sends serpents among them. They're called poisonous serpents, burning uh, serpents of fire, probably because when they bit people, it made them burn. And the other thing it did is that it made them die. The people soon realized that they, they were just not accepting what God had given them and were no longer trusting God, believed him where he was promising. And so they came to Moses again and repented and said, tell God to do something, get rid of this. I think it's interesting the way in which God did it. He didn't take away the serpents. He had Moses put up a brass serpent on a pole. 
And if they were bitten by one of the snakes, they would look up to the pole and they would be healed. God was demonstrating to them his mighty power of being able to look after them even in the midst of something that threatened their death. So we see the redeeming hand of God at work among God's people. And when we look at the Old Testament and the story of God and Israel, it, go, go, it occurs over and over and over again that God is redeeming his people. That's the nature of God. We move ahead to the lesson that we read from Paul to the Ephesians. And he begins by saying, we were, one, we were once dead in trespasses and sins. And these were people who knew nothing of God until they heard the gospel. And so they knew what he was talking about. But Paul gives us some insight into this chaotic world in which we live. He talks about being in dead, dead in trespasses and sin, following the course of the world course of the world leads to death. Then he goes on to talk about the ruler of the power of the air, which also affects us. It seems to me that the ruler of the power of the air in which we live is the governments on which we live, and they lead us really nowhere. Then he talks about the spirit. The spirit that is present, the atmosphere in which we live, the atmosphere that is created by what happens in this chaotic world, created by uh, pandemic rhetoric and other things that lead us to death. The journey of dying. That's well, not all that Paul says. He just reminds us of where we live and the situation around us. And then, what does Paul say? Well, this is the theme song of the Lutheran Church. By grace you are saved through faith, and not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, lest anyone should boast. He goes on to say this. For we are what he has made us created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand to be our way of life. We have a reason and a purpose for being as a Christian people. It may not sound too attractive, but if we take time to take it seriously and begin to follow it, we will find the joys of what it means to live for God. Well, Jesus also tells us of God's redeeming presence in maybe a little different way. In the words of our gospel today, Jesus was saying these words because Nicodemus had come to him. Nicodemus had sneaked away in the night so that he wouldn't be known by his colleagues, so that he could ask Jesus about his preaching and his teaching, because he knew that Jesus was a man of God, but he couldn't quite put it together. And when he came to Jesus, Jesus says, well, unless a person is born from above, in other words, born by the Spirit of God, he will not be able to know these things. Well, that set Nicodemus to thinking. Then Jesus said to him, Just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. A beautiful image. Jesus referred to himself as the Son of Man. That again is known among the Hebrew teaching as one of the words for the Messiah, the one who is to come. Unless the, Son, unless the Son of Man must be lifted up, 
that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. And we recall the words that we read earlier. God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. So when we look at the cross to which we move in the season of Lent, we see not just Christ crucified, but I see myself, and I know that I'm not dying there. I know that I'm going through death into life, and this is the story of God's redemption for me, for you, and for the world. Jesus concludes his statement. I think he's still talking to Nicodemus when he says this. Those who do what is true come to the light. Those who do what is true. Jesus did what is true. And to follow the truth is to follow the life that Jesus gave us. Those that do what is true so that it may be clearly seen that their deeds have been done in God. So to follow the way of God, we are also giving to the world a picture of God, a way of God. It, it's just such an exciting thing to be a follower of God, to be redeemed by grace through faith. And faith is one of those elements of our being that we can't reason. It is, it is the element of our being that introduces us and links us to God. So I think that God's call to us is very clear and unequivocal. Live the life that I have given you that God has given you. Created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand to be our way of life. That's a way to live in the midst of this chaos. Amen. Our hymn of the day is number 335, Jesus, Keep Me Near the Cross.
The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. Let us share signs of peace with one another as we are able. Hi, peace be with you. Hi, I'm Sherry Negrasis, and I'm a member of Trinity Lutheran Church, and may God's peace be with you. Hello, I'm Rosalind Singh from Trinity Tavistock. May the peace be with you. Hello, I'm Robert Sim, and may the peace be with you all. May God's peace be with you. We continue with our offering prayer. Merciful God, receive the sacrifice of our praise and thanksgiving and the offering of our lives and of our labors, that following in the way of the cross, we may know the joy of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. Amen. We continue with our prayers of intercession. Renewed in the promises of baptism, let us pray for the church the world, and all who are in need, saying, Lord, in your mercy, and responding, hear our prayer. O oh God, preserve your church through good times and bad. Empower pastors, missionaries, and all ministries of service for their work throughout this pandemic. Bless Lutherans around the world, our ecumenical partners, and everyone preparing for baptism at Easter. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Continue your creation of this good earth. Nourish seas and rivers, and give water to thirsty lands. Nurture spring growth that feeds hungry creatures, and bless the fields being prepared for spring planting. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. In Brazil, and wherever COVID-19 rages, send healing. In Nigeria, wherever there is domestic terrorism, send harmony. In Ethiopia, and wherever there is bloodshed, bring peace. In Yemen, and wherever people starve, give food and water. Wherever there is discrimination, inspire all residents to honor one another and to strive for justice. Prosper the work of those who care for victims of violence. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give rest and welcome the migrants. Bring runaways to places of safety. Protect all who are incarcerated. Provide caring families for children who seek adoption. Give a decent and safe life to those who live on our streets. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. As you saved your people of old from snake bite, so now deliver all who suffer from disaster, hunger, disease, and despair. And those who suffer loss, or illness. We especially name before you Andrea Porter, Jane Wittig, and those we name in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We praise you for all the saints who have lived and died in Christ. Remembering Frank Bickle and Russell Yauzi. We remember before you the 2.5 million people, of which are 22,000 Canadians who have died from COVID-19. At the end, 
bring us with them in, into life in your presence. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Trusting in your covenant of mercy, O oh God, we lift our prayers to you, to your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and with mercy. And the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. So I have a few announcements for the members of Trinity Congregation. Trinity Church Council discussed reopening possibilities for in-person church worship this past Wednesday night. The consensus was to look at a possible reopening date at the next church council meeting in April. There has been a number of cases of infection in our community and concern for those who are most vulnerable and at high risk. The Nith Valley Ministry Area has been providing a weekly Wednesday Lent message video, and we have been sending that out to those, sending out the link to those whose emails we have access. Trinity continues to send out both its own video worship service and also that of the NVMA. And of course, phone access is available to both services. If you access these services and have any issues, please let us know. A bi-monthly newsletter is now available either by email or by delivery. So please contact Kim at the office if you would like to receive it. Our next edition comes out in April. In collaboration with Christ Anglican Church, Huntingford, and the Myth Valley Ministry area, they are offering a walk-through, drive-through worship experience called Waiting for the Dawn on Saturday, April 3rd, 2021, 6.30 p.m. to 7.30 p.m. at Christ Church, Huntingford. The journey begins at the fire. And should anyone have any questions or comments, I invite you to contact me at my email, trinitylcpastor at gmail.com. Stay safe, stay healthy. Uh -huh.